Hello everyone. Welcome to this follow-up for Mark Hollis by Mark Hollis. This album is quite great. Um, I have no problems with it. It's not quite in like my favorites as far as like the talk talk rhetoric goes or repertoire, I guess. Um, but there's a lot of great things to be said about this album, which I will start with now. I have it at a four out of five. The Color of Spring. It's a nice, soft piano song to kind of open things off. The last, re like the last reflection of Chameleon Day coming through off of the album of the same name, no less. Um, Watershed. I love the slinky, slow interplay between the sparse instruments. What a fantastic vibe on this track. It's like a film noir set in the Rocky Mountains is what it felt like to me. Uh, Inside Looking Out. Such a delicate mood on here. Incredibly depressed sound, but not heavy. Um, such a remarkable feat for so little sound, actually, um, to be able to achieve such a specific kind of tone. And I've, I've messed around with some of those chords on my guitar, and it's just like you're just strumming basic chords. It's incredible. The Gift. More great bass and percussion interplay like Watershed. Um, it's like the film noir has gone to the downtown jazz club now. Uh, and then A Life, um, a track that's a bit beyond me, actually. Um, such a, I don't know, it feels very intentional and like loaded with intention. Um, I'm redundant to say that. And Intrigue. But it's a hard one for me to dial into, but like lots of respect to it, though. Um, it's, it feels very specific. Um, which it was about uh, a certain person, right? Like the, the life of a certain figure in history. Um, Westward Bound. What a phenomenal track. Such a bittersweet guitar composition. I could listen to those notes roll over each other forever. And well, maybe I will. The Daily Planet. Uh, another oddball avant jazz track like A Life. Kind of a cool noir vibe though. Um, I like it more than A Life, I think. Um, and then A New Jerusalem. Interesting way to, uh, to uh, end Mark's output of notes, if you will. Um... And then he says, do you see, followed by like almost two minutes of silence. Like what a mysterious way to leave, to go out, like crazy. So that's Mark Hollis. Um, apologies. Um, I think, is it a good album? Yeah. It's certainly not for everyone though. I can like even like... I, I know like Laughing Stock is a stretch to recommend to people sometimes because I'm like, dude, you're... They play like four notes the whole album. Are you ready for that? Um, but like this is even more removed. Like the slowness of inside looking out. Um, and then like a life will try your patience if you're not into like higher art than, I don't know, something like Mad Max Fury Road. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a good album. It's quite great. Um, but it there's a special spice or like a not it's not like something is missing that was there during talk talk it's just different now it's different now it's kind of the way i would put it um and so even though i gave it a four out of five that's mostly just because like i don't see myself coming to this as much as like the talk talk stuff which i find very rejuvenating and refreshing this is more somber and wise and in that way, it almost feels like kind of removed from me. So it's it's harder to dial into these ones a little bit because they're like more advanced, I think. I don't know, but fantastic album. Glad I listened to it. Glad the Talk Talk uh, discography is done. Um, one, Mark Hollis, one of my favorite musicians of all time. Um, I love what he was able to conjure up. Um, and he's made some of the best songs I've ever heard. So uh, hats off to him. Godspeed, buddy, um, and Godspeed to the whole Talk Talk crew, and I hope more people come to listen to them and enjoy them in the future because I think they have a fantastic staying power like any good 80s synth pop band would. So that's my follow-up for Mark Hollis and Talk Talk in general. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, Godspeed. Mm -hmm.